The City of Phoenix holds community budget hearings throughout April, allowing residents to comment and make suggestions on the City Manager's trial budget before final decisions are made. This public discussion is among the reasons the City's budget so closely matches the community's highest priorities each fiscal year. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, thank you for hosting us in your community. This is a new spot for us for a budget hearing, so we're always uh, pleased to get out to a new place. I'm Ed Zerker, I'm the city manager, and we're here to present a trial budget to you. I'll recognize Robbie Sherwood here from Mayor Stanton's office. We have several other city staff here as well to listen. And uh, we're gonna start with a video presentation that gives a high level information on this booklet. So I hope if you get one of these, you can follow that. And there'll be a couple pages in there that will be referenced. And then afterwards, we'll just have a conversation with you about what's going on with the budget. So this is designed to get your feedback and, and input on what's uh, in our budget for the city of Phoenix. There's some big decisions coming up for the mayor and the city council about taxes and services and employee compensation. And so we'll try to explain that as best we can in the budget presentation in the video, and then we will uh, talk with you about the cards. So after the video, Councilman Milkowski will give uh, an opening statement, and then we'll move right to our conversation. So with that, let's roll the video. and welcome to your first look at the City of Phoenix 2016-17 City Manager's Trial Budget. Input from our residents is very important as your ideas can help shape what will end up being the final budget for the next fiscal year. The final budget is important because it provides the plan for how the city will spend taxpayer money and how services that you depend on could be impacted. I think the city manager's trial budget provides a great pathway for us to continue providing the outstanding services that Phoenix residents expect and it gives employees the opportunity to continue to provide that great service every day. Why is a balanced budget important? It's required by state law and city charter. In this trial budget, there is a $60 million surplus that can be used to improve essential services that will benefit the community. Examples include public safety needs, employee compensation, and restoration of some programs and services. So how does the funding work? Funding for the city budget comes from three sources, the general fund, enterprise funds, and special revenue funds. Examples of general fund city departments include police, fire, the library, parks and recreation, and streets. Enterprise fund departments include aviation, water services, solid waste services, and the convention center. Special revenue funds account for designated sources of money for a specific purpose, like sales tax dollars for the hiring of police officers and firefighters, and funds for public transit. So how did we get here? Under the leadership of the mayor and city council, we are glad to say the budget is balanced. The mayor and city council have really set the tone and direction for our city staff and employees to be focused on innovation and efficiency. Here's just some of the ways that happened. First, eliminating 119 vacant positions and other administrative savings actions that will result in an overall savings of just over $11 million. Second, there is a one-time carryover of $25 million from last year's surplus. Also, the city is saving by making needed adjustments to the workers' compensation fund and has sold extra police helicopters that were too expensive to maintain. Did you know that Phoenix has reduced administrative expenses and has the smallest number of employees per capita in over 40 years? And while still providing great services, the city has reduced authorized staffing levels by more than 2,700 positions. That is 16% since 2007. Also, city staff is constantly finding innovative ways to save money. Did you know that since 2010, we have saved $106 million in taxpayer funding? Some examples, the municipal court. It saved almost $600,000 by eliminating a criminal courtroom and a civil courtroom due to lower court volume. Plus, a new process with copy services. By reducing the number of printers and copiers citywide and securing more competitive rates with copy contracts, 
the city should save hundreds of thousands of dollars each year. Now to rising pension costs, which continue to be an important issue. Thanks to the leadership of the mayor and city council and actions taken by voters, the savings from reform efforts will reach $1.1 billion over a 23-year period. And what a difference a year makes. Last year's five-year forecast projected a deficit of up to $58 million. But with guidance from the mayor and council and the efficient work of city staff, that deficit was eliminated without reducing services to the community. Mayor and council also expect us to provide great service, and that's what the city employees work to do every day. One of the biggest challenges the city faces has to do with how the city will continue to make its debt payments for voter-approved capital projects. We're in a place where we need to make tough choices, like any of us during the recession, where you may have lost a job or your, your wife may have lost their job, and your income changed, and your bill stayed the same. So the city of Phoenix is at that point now. Several options will be discussed, including increasing Phoenix's combined property tax rate. Phoenix has had the same rate for 20 years. That means since 1995, residents have paid $1.82 per $100 of assessed value for property tax. The rate has gone unchanged while the city's population grew and important services developed, like new fire stations, parks, and libraries. The city has been using a reserved fund to help pay off that debt. This has relieved homeowners from increases in property tax rates, especially during the recession. What other cities in the valley, after the recession, they started to, when their assessed valuation changed, the values of their properties changed, they started to float their rate up and down so that they levied the same amount of money, brought in the same amount of income. What the city of Phoenix did, we thought that we would give our taxpayers relief. So we kept the rate at $1.82. In the meantime, the city had debt to pay, so a reserve fund was used. This relieved homeowners from increases in property tax rates, especially during the recession. But now that well of backup money is finally running dry, and the city needs to raise an additional $37 million to pay the debt service. Otherwise, Phoenix's strong credit rating could take a hit. We are taking in less money, and now we still have the same payments. Our payment on our mortgage is essentially our debt service. That's what we have to continue making. At the same time, we have other sources or other services that we provide. Those costs have also increased, and our ability to make those payments has gotten tougher and tougher. The budget lays out five ways to solve this. A detailed explanation of these options are in the trial budget summary booklet, handed out at all public meetings and online at phoenix.gov budget. Option number one. Increase the combined property tax rate by 35 cents to $2.17. This would equal an additional $4.25 per month on an average single family home, about 14 cents a day. Even at this rate, the average single family homeowner will still be paying less than they did back in 2009. We could continue to provide services, infrastructure, pay our debt at the lowest, cheapest possible cost and maintain a very strong bond rating and to provide our citizens with good services for many years to come. Option number two, generate $37 million in other ways by increasing a local sales tax, a food tax, or perhaps an addition to your city services bill. Option number three, use all of the $60 million surplus to provide property tax relief for two years. That means no money would be available to restore employee concessions or add community services, including those cut in previous years. Now keep in mind, with this option, the city would still need to find a solution to this problem in two years, and this could hurt the city's strong credit rating. Option number four, use some of the surplus money to provide tax relief for one more year, along with some of our reserve funds but the issue will have to be addressed again next year. Now with this option, the city could improve some proposed services, but not all. And this option could hurt the city's strong credit rating. Some of these other options are short term, which means they're only gonna provide a solution for one year, maybe two years. And it really is just kicking the can down the road and we will be back in this situation in a couple of years asking for a solution from our um, citizens. Option number five cut $37 million from the general fund by making significant cuts that would directly affect the city's ability to serve residents and business owners. The city manager has outlined $44 million in services from which to choose. This includes cutting $14 million from the police department, 
$10 million from the fire department, more than $2 million in library services, and $6 million from the city's parks and recreation department. In a service business like the city, dollars translate into the people who provide the services, like 911 response, recreation programs, senior and youth services, and more. Since 2010, we've been drawing down our fund balance reserve for our GO bonds, and we're at the end of that. So this is the last year that we can use that reserve to pay our debt service. How will the city tackle this debt service situation for the long term? The plan is to refund and restructure bonds as long as rates remain where they are now. Until then, one of the mentioned five options must happen in order to pay the city's debt service for the facilities we've built. This is critical in order to keep the city's strong credit rating, which lets the city borrow money at a low interest rate to fund projects that are important to you. A look at these five options are on page five of your trial budget summary booklet. Here's a look at the new services proposed in the trial budget. Many residents feel that protecting the public should be the city's top priority. The mayor and council agree it's critically important to keep everyone safe. That's why public safety and criminal justice amounts to 72% of the general fund in this trial budget. The new budget adds $2.4 million for the first year of a three-year $11 million plan for Phoenix police officers to start using body cameras. Well, body cameras mean a lot of things. Safety is one of them, transparency is one of them, trust is another thing. For our residents, it allows them to have greater confidence in their police department. The budget would also allow the department to hire a director of employee assistance and wellness. Our employees are our most valuable asset. We need to make sure we take care of our employees. By hiring this position, it allows us to do that. Now to the fire department. The budget would spend $2.8 million in one-time costs to replace the obsolete emergency transportation billing system known as EPCR. We are the last large city in the state of Arizona to move forward with EPCR. Electronic records will let our paramedics spend more time on patient care and less time on paperwork and make payments from insurance carriers more efficient. The latest technology for us to do our jobs more efficiently, protect the information of a community, bill efficiently so the taxpayers are getting revenue back into the pockets in order to provide services to the city of Phoenix. The budget also calls for spending $1 million to begin rebuilding the road to North Mountain, along with fixing the radio tower to make it meet industry standards. The radio tower is critical to the city's public safety radio system. Now, to dedicated public safety special revenue funds. Because these funds will be balanced next year, the budget includes the hiring of 130 police officers in 2016-2017. Other than 2015, we hadn't hired any police officers for almost six years. The council also approved a plan to hire 36 firefighters next fiscal year. We have been fortunate over the last couple of years to be able to hire minimal amounts of firefighters. Um, this will allow us to fill all of our vacancies. Now, let's look at dedicated Phoenix Parks and Preserves initiative funds. Money would be used to maintain new dog parks, recreation centers, and playing fields. From the Development Services Fund, which is paid for by building permit and inspection fees, is this proposal. The city is seeing a huge spike in construction, which is great news. To keep up with demand, the budget calls for adding eight new positions to meet the needs of all the growth. Out of the Solid Waste Special Enterprise Funds, the trial budget calls for adding 15 positions and equipment needed to support curbside green organics, diversion, and illegal dumping programs. This will ensure that Phoenix continues to be a national leader in keeping waste out of city landfills. The budget calls for a few additions that directly will help the members of our community. They include new funding to support the city's continued effort to get veterans off the streets and back on their feet. So the proposed funding will support peer navigators who help veterans living on the street make all the connections they need to make to get into housing and stay housed. And money to add staff and supplies for after school programs for disengaged youth. This funding would really allow us to increase our programming by offering STEM programs, physical activities, as well as interaction between the youth and adults in many of our city parks. Looking ahead, 
One of the biggest challenges to the general fund continues to be the cost of employee pensions. The trial budget reflects an increase of $15 million in civilian employee pension costs. But since the mayor and city council took action on pension reform and the voters made their voices heard, these short-term increases will slow over time with a savings of more than a billion dollars over the next two decades. Now to the police and fire pensions, which will go up $21 million. This is the result of a state Supreme Court decision. Increases in future years are partly because of other pending court challenges and system funding issues. Also, proposed reforms could help reduce how much the city will pay in the future. Then there's employee compensation. For six years, city employees have been part of the shared solution of our budget issues, agreeing to almost 6% in cuts to compensation. 4.2% of that is still in effect. The trial budget proposes to responsibly restore some of it, 2.6%, or $44 million, over the next two years. This is an investment in our most valuable resource, the workers. As a service business, the city depends on good workers to provide outstanding services. Keep in mind, the budget hasn't been adopted just yet. Your input is important, and the city of Phoenix wants to hear from you on what the upcoming budget should look like. The budget is really for the people of Phoenix, and so for it to be the best budget possible, it needs to reflect what people have to tell us, and that's why we're out to listen to the residents in the trial budget. In summary, the trial budget has several options, including solving the debt service issue by raising the combined property tax by 35 cents to $2.17. This would allow the city to use surplus money to add critical services to our police, fire, and other city departments. It would also allow the city to restore some concessions made by city workers six years ago. Fifteen public hearings will take place this month across all council districts, and you are encouraged to attend. Make sure you pick up a budget pamphlet outlining all the proposals and options at any of the public meetings or online at phoenix.gov slash budget. You can also send your comments or questions to budget.research at phoenix.gov or to reach us by phone, call 602-262-4800. You can also comment on social media by using hashtag phoenixbudget. Thank you for attending this budget hearing and being part of a very important process. The City of Phoenix is committed to its mission of improving the quality of life in Phoenix through the efficient delivery of outstanding public services. All right, thank you. So we will uh, take comments in just a second. When we do that, we'll ask you to come to the microphone. I know it seems kind of formal in this big room, but it's really because we're taping this for channel 11 and to put on YouTube so that other people can see what people in your part of the community have to say. And then we're also taking minutes and those are distributed to all the council members. So if you've had a chance to fill out a card, we'd appreciate that. Uh, we'll take your comments. And with that, I will turn it over to our, guest, our host, Councilman Nowakowski. Thank you, Ed. Give Ed a round of applause, our city manager. Thank you, Ed. Well, first of all, welcome to Estrella. I'm Council Michael Nowakowski. I represent this area. And what's so special about Estrella is the people that live out here. We have two individuals from the Estrella Mountain um, Village that are commissioners. we got Bill Barkeen and Lisa Perez. If you can stand up and get recognized. And you can walk over here. And what's so important about village commissioners is that these are the individuals that actually plan out this whole area. So when developers want to build out here, they first go to the, the Estrella Mountain Village and then they give their plans out there after it passes the village, it goes to our planning commissioners and then from there it comes to us as a council members. So if you really want to get things done out here, if there's plans or you have some type of uh, a project, those are the commissioners that make it all happen. So thank you once again for being out here. And wh what we're here to listen to is really the needs. What are the needs of this community out here in Estrella? I mean, we have a lot of wants. I have six children. And let me tell you, they, they want a lot of things, but what they need is they need food, shelter, and a great education. So those are the needs of those basic needs as parents that we provide to our children. 
So as a council member, I want to hear what are the needs out here in the Strayed Mountain for the community out here and also for the, the residents of the city of Phoenix. So I just want to thank you for being out here. Also, if you can give us some inputs about the um, property tax, I'd like to really hear if, if you, what's your feelings on the property tax. And if, um, if it's no on the property tax, then how would we cover all those other great projects and amenities that we have in the city of Phoenix to keep operating the way we do. So with that, we'll go with the first person, and that would be Mr. Tripkin. And Craig Tripkin was actually a city councilman at the city of Phoenix um, about eight years ago? A little longer than that. Thank you, Councilman, and thank you, uh, Ed, for being being here and for, for the proposal. Uh, I'm here to support option one of the, of the proposed budget, which is the city manager's trial budget. Uh, I'm here speaking on behalf of homeless people, uh, who, people who are utterly disenfranchised, people who are, don't have cars to make it out here to Australia. Uh, beautiful area, by the way. And um, I want to say that uh, Central Arizona, well, I would like to ask you not to cut any more homeless services. Uh, Central Arizona Shelter Services, which is the largest regional shelter in the area, has been cut by $180,000 or 20% over the last uh, nine years. And that's, that's cutting us to the bone. We are, we are down to it, and, and we, don't have, um, we don't have any more resources to, to supplant the, that significant cut. And the city managers, if you, if you don't accept the city manager's budget, it'll be a, a further $52,000 cut, which is another 5%, which would take us down 25% over the last eight years. Uh, and so I, I, I will tell you that we see 4,700 unduplicated individuals, 4,700 unduplicated individuals in a year, 62% uh, of whom uh, we only, only stay with us for three weeks. So we're a true emergency shelter in many respects. And um, this is sort of a pay me now, pay me later kind of situation. I'd wager that a significant amount of the police calls and fire calls are addressing, are dealing with transient people and dealing with homeless people. Uh, certainly a significant percentage of the emergency room calls uh, or emergency room visits are part of uh, uh, the, the home, are on behalf of the homeless population. And this echoes throughout our society in many, many respects. So I would please humbly urge you to support uh, Central Arizona Shelter Services and not support the cut, cut that uh, is in the proposed option number five. Thank you. Alrighty, next we have a community activist that makes sure that we as the city of Phoenix is doing our job. Ms. Walls, come on up. This has taught me. Huh? huh? No, I'm fine. Hi, I'm Sharice Walls. I am the president of the HOA here in Country Place Community. And it's kind of a situation where I'm kind of a, a do or die type thing. We have been in this community for the last 15 years is when this was developed. I really can't say which, which one I would go with of your sections, you know, your your cuts, but all I know is that this community has waited for 15 years to have 8.1 acres of land developed into a park. We have, as Country Place community, gone out and spent hours working to clean this up as the city asked us to do. And we have not heard a word yet back whether or not we are going to be allowed to do anything. We asked to have it made into a soccer field, do something for the children, do something for the community. It has not been done. You, we've heard every excuse in the book of why we don't have the money to do it, and yet I'm reading all these information about this, and there is money put aside. We are seeing other parks being developed. 
Why are we being ignored here in Southwest Valley? We are being ignored because we're way out here. Nobody pays any attention to us. We're like the adopted child of city. We don't even have our own city a post office because the city was too cheap to put one out here for us. So we have to go to Tullison. So it's the situation of what can we do? Well, as citizens out here, we're doing everything we can to make and to do and improve our area. We have a gain event that was extremely, extremely powerful last year. We are working with the city to try to, councilmen to try to get improvements. All we're asking is that the Parks and Recreation Department and the city work with us. Country Place Community will do our job if you will do yours. All we want is somebody to say to us, here's the plan, let's go with it, we'll work it out. I have brought with me some, some names. We've had 40 people that came out here that worked their tails off to clean out that 8.1 acres with Juan Rodriguez and his group. We have pictures of the area before and after and all you have to do is go down 99th Avenue towards the police station. The weeds are so high you can't see beyond the, around cars. There, it's danger. These are the type of things that we are not getting out here because we're not in the city of Phoenix. We are out in the suburbs. So I'm asking the city to please pay attention to Southwest Phoenix, to look at us watch us. We are an up and coming growing area and we are going to work our tails off for you if you will work with us. Um, I thank you very much and I know that I look forward to seeing Councilman Horkowski at our next GAIN event which will be bigger than better than ever before and we will have more people involved if we could get the city to say yes to us and to do things with us. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Thank you. I don't know if we can have it much bigger. We ran out of space last time, so. Yeah, we, it's gonna get bigger. All righty. Next is Mike Blecky. Councilman Nowakowski, uh, Mr. Zucker, first of all, let me just thank you guys. Uh, I've been around government my entire life, and this is not an easy period to govern and govern effectively. So you got a lot of tough decisions. Uh, first, I've been uh, I'm chairman of the board of CAS. I've been on the board for over 30 years. It was not my desire to be chairman again. But about a year and a half ago, it was clear that we were headed into troubled waters uh, as, as the stress of budgets uh, uh, degraded our ability to do what we do. Keep in mind, Cass, uh, tonight there'll be 600 people off the streets. There'll be families at Vista Colina. There'll be 470 people in, uh, near downtown. We are a recovery system in a, in a very significant way. Uh, Craig gave you some of the numbers. But we've got a case management system, and people know that when they have to check in a CAS. So they're going to be talking to somebody. There's going to be a system to try to get people what they need to recover. It's a hand up in a recovery system, and that's what's at risk right now. And when we say, when, it, when Craig mentioned 4,700 4, and change and of, of people coming through, those are non-repeats. They've gone someplace else. We do rapid rehousing. We get people a job ready. There's a portion of our shelter where you have people working on site. There's another issue going on because if you look around the country, whether it's uh, Los Angeles, Seattle, uh, uh, Portland, Reno, they've declared emergencies of various sorts for the homeless. I'm seeing it move way north into the area that I actually live in and I'm hearing it from professionals in the area. They're wondering what's going on. So 
uh, I urge you to stay involved in the homeless problem so it doesn't get completely out of hand again. Uh, I've been on that board for 30 years because when I was on a fire truck, we went to people when there was no response system for the, for the homeless. And there were, there were significant camps in downtown Phoenix couched all over the place. And so the community rallied at that time. In fact, I, I'm very proud that when uh, Terry Goddard became the mayor, this was his big crisis. And nobody would step up and put money on the table. And believe it or not, the firefighters, in a very interesting union meeting, delayed benefit increases and shoved the money over to the homeless problem. But you got a lot of tough issues. In terms of taxes, I'll pay more to stay in the city of Phoenix that's safe and it got, has got uh, amenities and effective response systems, not just an emergency response, but for the rest of the things that makes a, a, a city truly livable. Uh, I think that's, that's what's at stake. So, thank you. Thank you, Michael, and thank you for serving on the um, CAS board and helping out our homeless individuals. We have Lori Goodfellow. Um, basically, um, she doesn't wish to speak, but based um, the same concerns that the empty field next to the um, Country Place School, that we need to do something as soon as possible with it. Got that. Uh, we have a maybe, Rick. Did you want to speak, Rick? Basically, it's about public safety, um, that we need more police officers. Uh, patrolling our neighborhoods, um, the turnaround, the empty land, the parcel right behind um, the school that we need to develop a, a park as soon as possible. We hear you loud and clear, thank you. And then we have Lisa Perez, that's our commissioner. Come on down. First, I want to thank everybody who actually showed up. Um, one of the things that I've learned, I've been in this area for about three years now, we don't get much participation. Um, and I think that's unfortunate because the more of us that band together, the more that people are going to hear our concerns down here. Um, I send emails regular basis to city directors. Um, I actually was fortunate to do a stint for a council person, so I understand a little bit more about how the city runs. And I do understand that it really is the community that needs to speak up about the needs that they need over and over again. So I hear the plight of Country Day. I actually live at 75th Avenue in Laura Buckeye. And my biggest complaint around here is streets. I feel like our streets, we have some turn lanes, you don't have some turn lanes, we have some big problems with it. Traffic congestion in this area is only growing leaps and bounds. Um, having said that, like I said, I worked for about 11 months for a city uh, council person, and I have a lot of respect for the city of Phoenix staff and its management. Um, I'm a public affairs consultant by trade, but watching the staff and how they work and how they believe in their job, some of them have been there for 30 plus years, only job that they've had right out of college, they believe in it. Um, I was a city of Scottsdale resident before I moved to Phoenix three years ago, um, and I just feel like we need to support the city um, but we still have to be vocal about the things that we care about in our community. We have to trust that the city manager and the staff is doing the best that they can with the management of the resources that they have and the money that's coming in. And I believe strongly in that. I, I, like I said, I got to see it. I saw people working their butts off, staying there late at night, and they don't get a lot of respect. And I think that they deserve the compensation benefit. They got cut. And I believe that the services need to be supported. So I do support the city manager's trial budget. And personally, I will continue to fight for the things that I believe that we need in our neighborhood, and those are going to be hard. There's limited money. We're the, what, fifth largest city in the nation. Money only goes so far. But continue to fight the fight that we need to fight for our neighborhoods. But uh, uh, City Manager Zerker, I support you. And Councilman Nowakowski, I, I, we stand behind him. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And then we have uh, Vicki Soleil that um, has some comments that basically on the park next to um, Country Place Elementary School, that we need to fulfill our promise in building a park back there and basically making sure that um, we comply with the city ordinances of, of cleaning it up and, and keeping it clean and support of option one. And with that, is there anyone else that would like to speak? 
So with that, I just really want to thank everyone for coming out, and especially all of our staff members that are here today. They're here as volunteers to listen and to really take back all the information that they gathered here today. We heard, we heard you loud and clear when you talked about, especially Mike, the chair of um, CAS and, and Craig Tripkin, about the needs of continuing to support our homeless community and how it's not just helping people out, it's a, it's a hand up that they're finding locations and housing and jobs and they're getting them out of that situation that they're in and improving lives. And it's not just the same people coming every day, it's, it's new individuals and they touch the hearts and souls of about 4,700 individuals. Um, thank you so much for everything you do and we'll continue to support all those programs that we can as the city of Phoenix. I know that a lot of the um, services are from the county but we as a city of Phoenix feel that we need to do our fair share also. So we'll continue to support that. Um, country place, community, we heard you loud and clear that we need a park out here and that if we're gonna have a field out here that we need to make sure we're good neighbors also and, and we need to make sure it's, the blight isn't there so we need to keep it clean and we need to do our part too. And we'll, we'll try to work as soon as possible one of the things that slowed us down about seven years ago is the impact fees. And impact fees are monies that every time you buy a house, a brand new home, that there's about 14,000 or so that goes into libraries, parks, and streets, and, and sidewalks, and lights, and all that. And seven years ago, everything just went flat, just stopped. And that's one of the projections that we had was to actually build out this park, but the funding stopped. So now with the 202, it looks like there's some light at the end of the tunnel, and it looks like development's gonna start up again in this area, and hopefully within years that we'll be able to have some more impact fees to fill all these projects that we have. And also I know that our Parks and Rec are starting to um, create partnerships with the elementary schools and the high schools out here, that a lot of our parkland is right next to um, um, schools, so we're looking at those types of partnerships also in the future. But thank you once again for your support and, and, and fighting for a park, especially for the children out here to have something to, to do while, while they're out of school. Also, we heard um, the support of option one. Uh, we had three individuals come and say that they support option one and the city manager's um, uh, recommendations and also the need for all the different programs that we have in the city of Phoenix how it changes people's lives so once again I just really want to thank you for coming out here and the support of um, public safety also we heard loud and clear that we need to have more police officers out here in the streets and patrolling our neighborhoods and let me tell you that you're very lucky to have the precinct just within a half mile from here and um, that's one of the things that we really try to move up to building that precinct out here. So once again, thank you for coming out. Thank you for participating. And thank you for volunteering and, and making your neighborhoods um, great. God bless you all. I love you. Just real quickly, the next step will be a, a, a budget will be presented to the council on May the 3rd. And the council will vote on that on May the 17th. So based on all the input from the 15 public hearings we get, we'll put a, a final proposal out that will be voted on in the middle of May. So uh, please keep your eye on that and we will uh, inform you of, as that moves forward. Thank you and have a good Jessica. Oh, okay. Jessica, if you can please stand up. This is Jessica from District 7. So she's the individual that takes care of all the different concerns out here and, and helps coordinate all these different events. So thank you, Jessica, for being out here. And that's it. Oh, I'm telling you, she is. Thank you so much. God bless. You have been watching a community budget hearing held recently in Phoenix. For questions, comments, or ideas, please visit phoenix.gov or call 602-262-4800. You can also send feedback through social media by using hashtag phoenixbudget. This video can also be seen online at phoenix.gov forward slash phxtv or youtube.com forward slash city of phoenix az.